Proverbs chapter 11 is where we are, and we're picking up this morning in the 8th verse, and we're only going to do uh, through verse 14 this morning. Um, if you remember, I said when, when Solomon gets to this point, he just starts throwing stuff on the wall, it seems. Uh, just different topics, and, and sometimes there's a thread, other times there's not. I, I think there is in this short, brief passage. If you recall, he's been talking about the righteous and the wicked and making the contrast between those who are righteous, those who are right, they follow the right path, they're obedient to God's precepts, his law. Not that any of us are always obedient. Can you say amen to that? We all fall in, in different ways, uh, but the heart is there, uh, and there's that walk of righteousness and he contrasts that to the walk of the wickedness, uh, the walk of the wicked. And um, bottom line, if, if you bottom line all of his comparisons between the righteous and the wicked, it will fare well for life for the righteous. As opposed to the wicked, they're always bringing calamity in their lives. Um, Sandy and I were talking the other day, and it seems that some people just can never seem to get it together. And I I thought I said, you know, it's it, it's really what we've been looking at in Proverbs. If you if you know someone that it just seems like they can never. I'm not talking about things that come that they can't prevent, but they can never seem to get it together. And and you look at the circumstances in their lives, it's because they they choose to make the choice not to follow the precepts of God. And I'm not being critical. I'm not being judgmental at all by saying that. But I think we all know people, you may be watching this morning, and you're one of those that you just can't seem to, it seems like you never can get a break. Um, maybe examine uh, your actions, your decisions. Solomon writes Proverbs, and in the very beginning, he says, I write these things of wisdom so that you might live a prudent life, a managed life. And I, I've even said, even the, even the un, unsaved person, if they apply the principles of Proverbs in their life, the consequences in their life are going to be better. And so he picks up here in verse 8 where he says, The righteous is delivered from trouble, and the wicked walks into it instead. Trouble. The righteous is delivered from trouble. In other words, there's, there's trouble down the path here. And the righteous, if they follow the precepts of God and walk in the ways of God, They'll avoid that, but the wicked, it's not so. They're going, the, trap, the trouble is there. Trouble is all around us in life. And again, I'm not talking about sickness. I'm not talking about things that we have no control over, but those decisions that we make in life that set the course of our life and, and the, the outcomes in our life. He says here, for the righteous, trouble is there. Trouble is always just around the corner. Depending on what decisions we make based on the precepts in the Word of God, we can avoid those troubles. But the wicked, because they're not following in the paths, the precepts, the truths of God, they're going to walk right into that trouble. In verse 9, it says, With his mouth, the godless man would destroy his neighbor, but by knowledge, the righteous are delivered. The godless one has no regard for his neighbor. And with his mouth, through slander and gossip and all kinds of stuff, he will destroy his neighbor, try to bring his neighbor down. But the, con the, the opposite here, though, is if the righteous man, by knowledge, the righteous are delivered. In other words, he lives his life right, and those around him know, have a knowledge of his life. And, and the wicked the words of slander, the words of gossip by the wicked will not destroy the righteous man because the proof is in the pudding, right? Uh, so uh, don't be alarmed when somebody might go to slander you or gossip about you or try to bring you down by their words. Those who know you and know you best know that, that the words of that wicked person are not right. They're wrong. And by their knowledge of your life and the way that you live your life, um, you'll be delivered by, the, by the, uh, the harm that your neighbor's trying to bring you. Verse 10, when it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there are shouts of gladness. Um, I think this is kind of one of those at the end of life verses. And how do we want to be remembered? Um, 
And the city rejoices uh, when it goes well with the righteous. Uh, um, but when the wicked dies, the city rejoices. We've all probably known people that when they died, we might have grieved them, but it's almost like a sigh of relief because they're not going to be bringing harm to themselves or others anymore. And so um, by the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted, but by the mouth of the wicked, it is overthrown. Verse 12, these are tied together. Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding remains silent. Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense. In other words, the one who belittles, tries to run down, tries to tear down his neighbor, uh, lacks sense, you might say they're a fool. They're just stupid. They're ignorant um, when they try to belittle their neighbor. But the contrast here, a man of understanding remains silent. When that wicked one tries to belittle you, bring you down, uh, the one of understanding, the one of wisdom remains silent. Uh, I've learned that I don't have to defend myself and you don't have to defend yourself either. Um, my dad would always say silence speaks volumes. And here wisdom says just be quiet. Don't come back with a rhetorical response. It's interesting. I, I was reading the headlines this morning a little bit in relation to the Super Bowl. And I guess there were some words thrown around between Tom Brady, uh, who, by the way, man, he's got to be one of the greatest quarterbacks, if not the greatest quarterbacks ever. Seven Super Bowl wins. Um, but there were some words being thrown back between him and a defensive safety for the Kansas City Chiefs. And the guy with the Chiefs uh, immediately put out something on Twitter um, to belittle um, uh, Tom Brady. And I thought, man, what a day we're in. Uh, you know, it used to be that <clears throat> the person might get on the party line. How many of you grew up with a party line where three or four neighbors were on the phone line? And they might call to spread stuff. But today we have Twitter and it just goes out there, man. But here's what was amazing is that it was picked up and it was a lead headline on the major news network that I look at their website most every morning just to see the headlines of the news. Um, and so it just amazes me that, that the gossip, the, the back and forth, the words, people grovel. They, why is it on the front page? Because people love that stuff. That's just, that's just not good. So when, when fodder comes your way, ignore it. When something comes your way about somebody else, if it's another brother or sister bringing it, rebuke them and tell them to button their lips because it's gossip and God doesn't like it. Uh, he's displeased with it. But um, don't be drawn in by all that stuff. Man, it only just destroys us. So there are much better things to be interested in rather than um, words thrown back and forth on Twitter, okay? Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. Here, still talking about the, the tongue. But the one that goes around slandering another one will reveal secrets about that person. Maybe something that's been told in confidence to them. They can't wait to go tell somebody else. You know, it's like, man, I want to share something with you, but but I, I got to know that, can I share this in confidentiality with you? Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. So you share that with that person, and that person can't wait to go and spread it to somebody else. They, they spread that stuff. They're, they're not to be trusted. Uh, oftentimes, they go to a prayer meeting to spread it, right? Um, but he says here, but but with the trustworthy uh, in spirit, uh, he keeps a thing covered. I always said, I uh, just told somebody last week, I'm going to go to my grave with a lot of secrets that people have shared with me. Um, it, it's not our place to share those things that people share in confidentiality with them. And can I have a side note here for you? Um it's good to have one, two, maybe three people in your life that you can share your deepest, darkest heart with. One is my wife. The other one's on here right now, Mitch. Uh, I can share things with Mitch, and and I know that Mitch is a brother that loves me. He's not gonna. He's not gonna. Um, he's not gonna coddle me. He's gonna tell me truth. 
uh, but he will guard it uh, and love me. Lastly, where there is no guidance, the people falls, but in an abundance of counsel, there is safety. Well, I pray the Lord blesses you today and he keeps you. Um, take these words, uh, read back through these, meditate on these few verses, chew on them, mine them for all the riches that are there. Uh, ask God to give you an opportunity today that, that wherever you are, first ask him that he would make you keenly aware and that you'd be intentional when he gives opportunity to plant a seed in somebody's heart of the gospel that if if you come across somebody that you can tell God's working in their lives and, and, and he would use you to cultivate those seeds that have already been planted in their hearts and that if God by his grace would allow you or I to participate as he saves somebody and we could see that. Oh Lord, let me see that today.